What's going on guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you very much for stopping in. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button right now and hit that little bell notification as well. You don't want to miss out. We do three videos every single week, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays. So if you're interested in Nissan and Infinity related content, this is probably the channel for you. If you're just interested in automotive content in general, this might be a good channel for you as well. We've, we focused heavily on Q50, 350Z, like I said, Nissan Infinity related stuff over the last couple of years, but I'm, I'm, I'm starting to broaden horizons a bit this year. We're going to cover a much wider range of topics. So I hope you guys will stick around. Uh, today in particular, we're talking about coilover setups and preload specifically. I wanted to check them on the rear because I've heard some racket coming from the back and sometimes if preload is not adjusted properly, the spring can actually make some noise on the perch. And sure enough, there was almost no preload on the spring. I was nearly able to uh, twist this top ring by, my, by hand. Uh, so I took all the load off. Usually I like to do it off the car. It should be fine. There's no wheels on it suspended. You know, there's no pressure going up against the spring, so the spring is free to drop. Anyway, uh, I took all the pressure off of the spring, turned this top collar as tight as I could get it with my hand, and then you bring this bottom collar up, and then holding this one still, tighten this, essentially moving it up the body of the, the threaded body here, compressing the spring. Normally you'd do about five millimeters, which is the thickness of the wrench, so you, twist this one up the collar until you can fit the wrench between the two collars here. I went just beyond that, probably eight, maybe nine millimeters, uh, just to give myself a little additional preload. Uh, I like it, I think this car can benefit from it. And I've heard of others um, going as far as like a quarter of an inch of preload on the rears for these Zs. So I thought I would test it out and see what happens. So I'm gonna do the other side as well. So the first clip you saw that I'm, I'm starting to dial in the suspension on the 350Z that I got a few months ago. Uh, we're working through some things and now we're, we're hitting on suspension. Now that we got our wheel and tire setup dialed in, we're trying to get it sitting just right and performing perfectly. Um, so I'm going to be showing you that process here in the video, but I just kind of want to do a quick little introduction in terms of what we're doing. So the front, as you heard me say in that first clip, uh, the front, I pulled those coilovers off uh, and just, just kind of started fresh. The previous owner had them installed. I don't know if things got seized up or they didn't know how to adjust them. It seemed like they were trying to adjust ride height through preload, which is not the right way to do it. Um, and then now digging into the rears, there was no preload set at all. So I don't know what the hell was going on and what their thoughts were. The car was slammed before I got it. And it, it, it was just a mess. So I thought preload is a good topic of conversation today. Like usual, old coilovers, these were seized up pretty good, but I just put the wrench on backwards and wedged it up against the uh, inner fender here. And that was able to prevent this from turning while I tried to break this bottom ring loose, which I did. So I'm backing this all the way down. And now see this turn is really easy. Now what I need to do is back this collar down until there's no pressure on the spring. So I'll spin it in the same direction. And it spins really easy, so there was like no tension on it at all. So, so there's no preload on here. There's no tension on here. You can see it's loose from the perch. The spring and the, this lower portion, this lower ring, are actually kind of fused together with grime and gunk, so that's fine. There's no pressure on it. We'll just start working it up with our fingers. Again, don't worry about this bottom one right now. Tighten it as tight as you can get it with your fingers so it's pushing the spring up. So you're basically seeing how tight you can compress that spring with your hand. So there was not even close to this much on it originally. I was using my fingers to do it. Well, that's about as tight as I can get it with my fingers. Raise this ring all the way up. Okay. Now you keep this lower ring right here, use your fingers or whatever, and then the wrench again to raise this top one up. Normally that's about right. You can fit the wrench between them. It's about five millimeters. I'm gonna go almost double that. I did three twists like that. So yeah, maybe seven, eight millimeters. We'll do a little bit more. There. That's 
all right now just tighten this all the way up and lock them down going you know twisting them in opposite directions so you're squeezing them tight so it's locked in place that's the proper amount of preload nice so you can just kind of imagine the 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 the, um, the result of too little preload or too much preload, you can kind of just use some common sense and think about what some of the, the problems might be or what some of the ride characteristics might be if you don't have enough preload. Like I, I mentioned, I think, in the beginning of this video, uh, when I was adjusting, one of the reasons I wanted to dive sort of into this project in the 350Z is that there was some noise happening in the rear of the car. There was some rattling, some clunking, and sort of what my mind went to is if the preload is not set properly, it can actually leave that spring loose between the two perches, between the top and the bottom. And so when you hit bumps, it's actually moving around in there. And I think that's what was happening. Uh, if you have too much preload, uh, the car might be very, very rigid. It reduces the amount of travel in the spring. So when you hit bumps, it's just, you know, it's not moving as much. Where if your spring length, you know, preload is like this, the compression is relatively soft, the spring is going to have more travel. But the more you crush it down, the less traveler is going to be. Uh, what we, what I have seen a bunch of times just owning different cars and what other people have done is that people get in there and they don't necessarily know how to adjust their coilover so they they adjust their ride height by preload rather than uh, twisting that whole tube uh, down into the bottom portion of the coilover to lower it or, or bringing it up and out of that tube they're compressing the spring so they're not making an adjustment on the shock part of the coilover, they're making the height adjustment on the spring. Uh, it's okay, I guess, if you don't have a lot of preload already set, but if, you're, if your preload is kind of dialed in and now you're crushing that spring down even further, you're, yeah, sure, you might be adjusting your ride height a little bit, but you're also changing how the car is going to feel and handle. So just pay attention, make sure you're adjusting ride height by the actual, um, the cylinder, rather than by the, the spring itself. <laughs> So you can see in this video, my intention was to get a little bit more preload than what is normally recommended by some of these manufacturers. Like I, I described, BC Racing says, compress that spring down by hand as tight as you can get it, and then an additional five millimeters, the, the thickness of the wrench itself. I, I wanted to go a little bit beyond that, maybe eight to 10 millimeters. I, I eventually may go a little bit more. Um, I've been on that setup, how I adjusted the coilovers now for a couple of weeks. It seems to ride pretty good, but I think it could handle a little bit more preload, to be quite honest, uh, especially if we start driving a little bit more aggressively, just kind of reducing that, that flex and that roll a little bit more. Uh, but generally, with the wide tires that I have, you know, and the, the, the deep offset in those Cosmos Racing wheels, it kind of pushes the edge of the tire out towards uh, the fender. Uh, we're lowered, so our center of gravity is quite low. Uh, so it's pretty. It's a pretty nimble ride right now, uh, but I don't think maybe an additional five or six millimeters of preload would hurt anything. Uh, but what I really want to do is go to adjusting the coilovers on my Q50. Uh, if you guys have been following along, along uh, you know that I did the standard preload set with the BC Racing coilovers. And one issue I've been having, or one thing I've noticed on that setup, is that. Uh, the BC Racing coilovers tend to sag. If you adjust the ride height and you go for, you know, three, four, five, six weeks of driving, you're going to get another eighth inch sag. And I think part of that might be uh, solved or reduced if I were to compress that spring a little bit more. It's going to reduce the amount of spring settle, I would say. But just, that's my theory. So I think I might go maybe a full quarter of an inch of preload. Uh, maybe maybe even slightly more, uh, but it's certainly not going to hurt that car. Those BC Racing coilovers are still pretty soft. It rides pretty good on the Q50. So I think I can, actually now, I could probably raise it up a little bit how you normally would and then adjust the preload a little bit more aggressively. So it'll bring it up maybe a quarter of an inch, add a quarter of an inch of preload, and I'll be kind of right where I'm sitting right now. Uh, because that preload again is going to adjust the ride height just based on how much we do it so there's a couple of things you can play with and that'd be my recommendation really kind of do some research figure out what you're going for in your particular vehicle um, but i kind of just want to toss it out there today get you get us thinking a little bit again I, i'm not a, a suspension expert but there's some pretty obvious things some pretty obviously pretty obvious characteristics that can come about when you think about what you do when you compress that spring before the car is even set on the ground. And there's no one size fits all. Uh, and I think that's pretty obvious as well. You really got to think about what you want to use your car for. You got to really think about 
what you're looking for in riding, ride characteristics and handling. Um, and just do some research. But that's the thing about coilovers, guys, right? It's not a install them and then leave them and you're done. The point of them is to really dial in the suspension setup on your vehicle, both how the car feels and its handling characteristics, and of course, how it looks. Uh, so there's a lot more to it. Don't just go to coilovers because somebody's telling you that uh, springs are for poor people or that uh, your car isn't a real car until you get coilovers set up or you don't know what you're doing you're talking about don't don't let people push you around make sure you do some research before you get them and you install them there's a lot of options out there uh, there's a lot of options that you should maybe stay away from just because of quality there's a range of options there's a range of price points and there's a plethora of information online maybe this video is just a little bit of a starting point for you for how you might want to approach your setup in terms of preload and kind of getting a, a, a beginning understanding of what preload is and what it can do to your suspension setup. But if you're just starting out with this stuff, hopefully this video kind of was uh, at least a little bit helpful and uh, you can go adjust your, your preload right now, at least to sort of a, a standard agreed upon manufacturer suggested uh, start on your, your preload setting. Uh, again, I went a little bit additional beyond that five millimeters in the 350Z. We're gonna do it in the Q50 as well, just to see if we can get rid of that sagging sort of issue. Uh, and just kind of get in the Q50 riding a little bit more stiff because we are pretty low now. So hope you guys will stick around. Hope you check out my other videos. We've got over 450 videos uploaded now to YouTube. Uh, so I'm sure if there's, uh, I'm sure there's something in there that you find of interest. So I appreciate you guys watching. I appreciate the continued support. Thank you very much. We'll see you in the next one.